Saturday Social, brought to you by EA Sports FC with PlayStation 5. We should talk about the Champions League because we saw some unbelievable performances, uh, unbelievable games, by the way, yeah. but some great individual performances in the Champions League, which gave us an idea for this section. Yeah, we thought it's the perfect time, really, to do a start bench sale, to bring mm. it back. So we're going to be doing a start bench sale Champions League special. Lots of different categories to go through. You guys should know how this works by now. You've got to put one player in start, one in bench, one in sale. Boys, pick your whiteboards up. Okay. Yes, yeah, as you said, Champions League theme to all of these. We're going to start with Wonder Kids, OK? The three right. that we're asking you to pick from are Lamine Yamal, Jude Bellingham and Jamal Musiala. That is... So, oh. I mean, good luck with this. Yeah, tough. They Based on this season, as Joe said, one in yeah. start, one in bench, one in sell. Musiala being heavily linked with Manchester yeah, City. Yeah, I saw that. As well. Yeah, that 120 million me pound moves so being. Old. Being mooted. I mean, feel old. Yeah. <laughs> Spencer's already done, but Shark is still. It looks, it looks like he's changed his mind a little. You bit. know what? Okay. Oh, no, I don't know why. I don't know why. There's an asterisk here because okay. the pl the player I put in cell Let's have a is look probably one of my favourite players in the whole world right now. But I sold him. Let's have a look. Reveal to the camera, please. Yeah. So you've yeah. you've got it exactly the same. Okay. So I'm going to start with you, Sharky. Yep. You changed your mind there. What were you changing? Because your mouth. Like, I, I can't fathom how someone's so good at 16 years Mad. old. Like, I can't believe it. I like, yeah. he... These two are youngsters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And they're four years his senior. I don't know how crazy that is. He made his debut for Barcelona at the age of 15, and he made his debut for the Spain national team at the age of 16. That is insane. His generation is unbelievable. <laughs> I can't believe how... Like, I still can't believe how good he is. I watched um, Spain versus Brazil. Yeah. And he was unbelievable. He's 16 years he's old. He's so physically developed. Like, like yeah, it's, 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 like, it's I've, yeah, player, I think he's going to be one of the best in the world before yeah. he's 20. Um, I think, obviously, Drew's an ob uh, obvious choice, especially this season, how yeah. he's, his first season in, in, in Spain and Madrid and like how he's taken that team and become the main man. is an unbelievable footballer. I think, technically, I think he's the best here out of all these guys, dribbling-wise, but... Bayern haven't done so well in the league this season, so... You totally agree, Spence? I mean, I don't think we can even put Jude in, and probably not Jamal either, in the Wonder Kid section anymore, really, because they've kind yeah. of been around a, a long time. Just their age is, yeah. is just a number, really. Um, these formats are incredibly harsh, right, because you've got to put someone in a sell category. Yeah. We don't want to sell any of these guys. They're all yeah. going to be un unbelievable. But I think, yeah, your male's best stuff this year has probably been for Spain, like, and it's been good across the board. But talking about Champions League and domestic leagues, I think what these guys have achieved, particularly Jude, is, yeah. is ridiculous. But... You know, shout out to all of them. They're all going to be... These two already are, I would say, two of the best footballers in the world. And he's right up there as well. On that, then, because they are one the kids, so one the kids category, um, who do you think has got the highest ceiling out of the three? I mean, I think Jude's there already. Like, I don't know where Jude goes from here. Yeah. Like, you know, he's, if he just sustains what he's doing now for the next decade, yeah. he will be arguably in the conversation of the best... You know, Ballon d'Or. Yeah, definitely Ballon d'Or. A yeah. couple of them in it for him. But what's interesting about him is what's happened to him since he went to Madrid and he's gone further yeah. forward. He's yeah. become a, a, a goal scorer, right? right? Yeah. yeah. Top so scorer in La Liga still. Is that going to continue at Madrid? You know, could we even see it happen with England at some point? Mm. I think it's actually our best look for when Harry Kane's unavailable. Like, you know, we tried some things out. That name was a false nine. Yeah, well, why not? Wow. He's doing okay. it for Real Madrid. That's Fabregas at Spain. Yeah. And it also opens up an opportunity to play Phil Foden behind him in that position because wow. he's playing where we want to play Phil Foden right now, really. Instead, he's working Foden in on the... Uh, sometimes on the left. Yeah. I mean, he doesn't really play for City ever. And it's like, right, get Jude... If, oh, well, I love Kane, but if Kane's unavailable yeah. like it was the other day, stick Jude in there and then work the team around Phil Foden in the 10. Wow. You went your mile high seeding. Yeah, I, I think he has the highest seeding. Like, wow. Once again, like I said, he's competing at the highest level. Barcelona are still in the Champions League. They are obviously still competing um, as well as they are in the league and obviously mm. he plays for Spain and they've got the Euros coming up. At 16 years old, he is this good and he said how already physically developed he is. Mm. I think we're looking at another player that can be in the realms of like another Mbappe, these kind of players, oh. Gen genuinely. So, so I, I, I think his ceiling is ridiculous. He's got yeah. braces on. Tells you everything. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah so well. very young. Yeah, it's a good point. It's, it's so well. Good first yeah, debate. Yeah, good first debate. Right, uh, let's go to defensive midfielders next. Yeah, you can I take your magnets because, off. Because, you know, lots to talk about Rodri this oh, week. What a player. The record continues, doesn't it? And pairing him alongside here, Joshua Kimmich, who's kind of played as a right-back at times yeah. this season as well, and Chouameni, who's also deputised as a centre-back yeah. at times. But that is predominantly because of injuries to the likes of Alaba, yeah. to the likes of Nacho. Um, so, when they're all playing in defensive midfield, what's your order? Mm. Oh, when they're playing in the... Oh, yeah, he had it in the... Yeah, yeah last second. Oh. 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 Go, come on. Yeah, yeah, no, you oh, it a little bit. It's yeah. not the same anyway. It's not yeah, yeah, no, no, but... Um, I've got the same again. Yeah, yeah, I've got the same, see? Yeah, I mean, Rodri's in a class of his own for me right now. Like, I think you know, he's added goals to his game last few years as well, and I just think he's so good. Mm. I mean, they're all quality, obviously. These two have been more versatile. They've had to be. 
obviously Real Madrid having a, a better season than Bayern are. Yeah. Uh, let's talk about whether Kimmich is you know, even going to stay at Bayern, all these things. Like, again, it's, a, it's, a, it's a tough to choose between three world-class footballers. But I think Rodri's the obvious one here. And these two are interchangeable, but I've gone through many. Rod Rodri's like development now. Where do you put him? Is he the best midfielder on the planet? Because it doesn't feel like he's just a defensive midfielder anymore. Best scoring season for Manchester City. Uh, ever this season. Oh, it's yeah. the stats, right? I mean, he hasn't lost a game. Yeah, 64, yeah. I think. Yeah, that's yeah. outrageous. <laughs> wow. like, I think he's definitely in that position, not necessarily centre mid, but like that sort of yeah. defensive sort of pivot. Yeah. He is the guy. I think he's now moved past just being that. Yeah, know, he has. But yeah, you, you yeah. can't put him ahead of Bellingham for me in terms of what Bellingham he's can do in the midfield. Bellingham. Do you think? Yeah, Rodgers better than Bellingham. They're different players, I think. Yeah, yeah. I think I, they're I, in the I, same I tier. Compare, I compare. But like if you were building the best midfield now, you'd have him in it and you'd have Bellingham in it. Yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. And then but then you were saying that he's better than Bellingham for you in terms of I think, I mean, season. They, like, like Spencer's right, like it's hard to, to um, compare them. Like they're so different, different, positions, yeah, different yeah. positions. But I think he's the best midfielder, full stop. I think he's more than just that defensive midfielder that obviously everyone knows him as. Um, I think now that they've lost someone like Gondwan, mm. his role has changed where he's actually even more of like an eight. You know, and he's 19 more... goal involvements this season. Yeah. And, and that shows, like, he, yeah. doesn't, he doesn't sit as much anymore. He's, he's high up the pitch, he's involved, and he's so good on the ball, so good off the ball, physical presence. The guy tucks his shirt in. Do you know what's wild? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? yeah. He tucks his shirt in. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, he's serious. Do you think what's wild about Roger is he's still only, I think, 27? Mm. Yeah. Like, yeah. he feels like he's like... I think of him as an older player. <laughs> no, you do, I'm like... not going to say the brands, I don't remember, but he doesn't he drive like a sort of... <laughs> Family saloon. Like. He was, like, he, he was yeah. studying at uni two seasons ago. Yeah, I mean, like, wow, yeah. man, he was, he was doing his degree. Unbelievable. Most it? successful passes, passes in opposition half, and touches of all Premier League players this season, as well as having his best goal scoring season and the stat you said about yeah. being unbeaten. Amazing. I think we can all agree, best in his position in the world right now. Uh, let's move on to Liam. midfielders, but slightly more attacking Advanced. midfielders. Um, well, it's inverted, like, some yeah. the, the, the wing. The three as well, that we've got they? are Phil Foden, a lot of chat about Phil Foden. Uh, this week, another fantastic week for him. Martin Odegaard and Antoine Griezmann. <laughs> oh, so this, this is um, difficult. I, think. I don't like this one. Yeah, this Especially for Sharky. Watch the partisanship come out for Sharky. Oh, yeah. God. This is difficult. Can he afford? Should we go Spencer first? I, I, I think we're going to have another. We might cool. agree on all of these. I, I, yeah. don't, nah, sure. I don't know. I don't know. If Bias is going to start seeping. Yeah. Spain, I don't know. He really hasn't got Odegaard. Spain, I don't know. If he has, that's mad. But ah, you got I've Griezmann gone... in cell. Yeah, so this is. I was torn between these two, and I'm, I'm not okay. trying to think maybe too much about it. I don't want to be Premier League biased and all that, but I have to go off what I know yeah. as a man. Obviously, yeah. I do see more of Odegaard. Um, Griezmann statistically this year has been very, very good. Um, yeah. And he's just like talking about Champions League particularly. Like this man. I'm arguing for him, yeah, but I'll put him in the cell section. What's going I know. on? I'm sort of arguing against myself here, but he steps up when you need him to, and he's the focal point of that, uh, that Atletico Madrid team. Yeah. But I think Odegaard's having a huge season. You can't ignore the yeah, Premier League season that Arsenal are having. How much an important a part of it? Obviously, he's a huge Arsenal fan, Sharky. We were talking about this backstage, and I was sort of saying, like, the problem with Arsenal is, and I'd love to see them win the league because I'd just like to see different teams win it, but if him or a few other people, there's so many... People, you take them out of the Arsenal team, and I think yes, they, yeah. they go, like they just fall off, whereas other teams haven't got that. Even Phil Foden, I'm arguing in reverse here, but Phil Foden is the start for me, having the best season. Mm. But if he gets injured for City, I don't see him drop off. Mm. I still think someone else comes in. De Bruyne has not played as much football, now he's available, he'll just step into that role. Someone else, Grealish will come back in, you know, all these things that can happen. So, yes, he's having the best season. I, know but I actually think Erdegaard and these two are more, more important, important yeah. to the team. Yeah, I mean, they rested Foden against Palace, didn't yeah, they? Yeah, inc I mean, incredible. Kind of out and they bought KDB. <laughs> Can I just ask you about Griezmann, though? Because you, you're bigging him up there in cell. We, Joe and I were chatting about this before and now. I feel like he's so underrated and appreciated. I saw Thierry Henry talking about him mm. being one of the most underrated players yeah. ever for France. We saw him yeah. almost one of the best players when they, when they won the World Cup. Um, for comparative stats, Erdegaard and Griezmann have both played 37 games. He's got nine more goal involvements than Odegaard this season, Antoine Griezmann. He's got 19 goals and 37 starts, playing look, in arguably a worse team in Atletico. Yeah, I agree with that. Do, do you feel like he's... I feel like he's he crazily underrated, Antoine Griezmann. I, I'm a big Griezmann fan, believe it or not. Like, <laughs> I, I just think that he is a more of a focal point attacking-wise for Atletico Madrid than Odegaard is. Like, you know, they, they haven't, you know, they've still got Morata. I mean, it tells yeah. you everything you need to know. He has played um, 19 now this year, Morata. But, but, yeah, yeah no, he does score, to be fair. That's the thing about Morata. But, by the way, making the decision. Sharky, Sharky, make the decision, come on. Well, uh, this is the hardest decision of my life. Yeah, but you're on, wow. we're, on li we're live now. I can't believe I'm seeing wow. it. Can you, can you reveal just, this, just please? Just fair play. Right, oh. there we go. What? OK. Start Gre so the Arsenal fan is starting Griezmann, benching Foden, selling Odegaard White. 
this Anton, like everything you just said is right. Anton Griezmann is unbelievable, and he's been unbelievable for so long. Agree. And he is one of the most underrated players of our era. I think Phil Foden is having clearly his best season. Odegaard, I just can't, I, I can't sell him. Like, you, but you did put him in sale. I, to... yeah, I mean, yeah. Thanks for clarifying. <laughs> um, he's been so good. Obviously, he's like he's our problem solver. He's yeah. our driving force. That second leg against Porto, I don't think we would have gone through if it wasn't for him. Um, yeah, that he, pass. That game was, it was unbelievable. He drove up, like everything, but he's having an unbelievable season. Even the way his goal against Real Madrid, that oh. score goal at like that caliber, so top pins. And I feel like no one was shocked. Everyone, no, everyone knew true, that was going point. in. Like he's just an unbelievable footballer. I, th- I don't think there's much to, s- to separate but guys, but for I, you is I, I think man. he's... Odegaard's been he's... on a journey this year, hasn't he? Because he didn't start as well as he finished exactly, last year. Yeah. And the Havertz situation came in, sort of disrupted things a little bit with yeah. the midfield, but he's now hit those levels. Th- this is where the format for me is interesting, because like, if you're, if you're using these, these terms traditionally, uh, partly sell is like looking at the age profile of the players, right? So you've got Griezmann, he's at the back end of his career. And you're also looking at, OK, you're talking about for their individual clubs, you're talking about for a, a new yeah. imaginary team, yeah. because mm-hmm. he plays in a very defensive side. Right, so that again, it changes the decisions. How expensive is the football owner? Yeah, you can. Yeah, 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 obviously. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) (laughs) But interestingly, one has got Griezmann sell, one's got him start. Just very quickly, Phil Foden, where do you think he ranks in terms of best players in the world right now on current form? Right up there, right up there. Not not gonna say he's number one, obviously, but I think he's in that position. You, You you do well to find someone better. Yeah, right. unbelievable form. Should we go to the next wow, one? I think that last one was tough. I think this one might be even tougher, to be honest with you. This is wingers, and we're doing oh Vinny Jr., Saka and Mbappe. Oh, my word. Shockey still looks distraught from the last catch. Where's the West Ham players, guys? Yeah, yeah. yeah. You want me to sell Arsenal players live on TV? Yeah, this is a tough, this is a tough one. I mean, and I've done it. obviously, Kylian Mbappe is Kylian Mbappe. Bukayo Saka having an absolutely outstanding season. Yeah. 18 goals, 13 assists. And Vinny Jr., 18 goals as well. Yeah. So Saka and Vinny Jr. both equally. Kylian Mbappe, equal I think, goals. 39 goals, 37 <laughs> starts for Kylian yeah. Mbappe. Uh, but Not Vinicius Jr. and Saka having a Sharky's great done first season as well. Let's have a look then, Sharks. Wow. Brave. Vinny Jr. in the cell. You're backing your boy. I have to, man. I can't. I can't sell two Arsenal players in a row. <laughs> I can't. Um, listen, you said. Okay, Mbappe start. Everyone, yeah, like, yeah. It's, it's, we can't doubt. Thirty-nine goals, thirty-seven starts. Yeah, it's 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 it's, it's kind of scary at this point. Um, okay, with these two, they have very similar stats. Mm. Vinicius obviously has done more so far in his career. He's won a Champions League and everything like that, and he scored the winning goal, etc. This season, having similar seasons, Saka, um, Arsenal top of the league right now. Madrid are top of their league, but I feel like the Premier League is a lot more competitive this season than, than it is uh, in the Champions League. Saka's first ever season in the Champions League, he's got. Uh, combined of goals and assists, he's got eight eight GAs. Uh, he scored in, obviously against uh, Bayern Munich in the quarterfinal. Very very good goal as well. Um, he's had a lot of high moments this season, especially in the Premier League as well. In the group stages of the Champions League as well, he went. It was unbelievable. But in the Premier League, especially the start of this year, he was I think five or six games in a row. He went without because like, he weirdly took a bit of criticism, didn't he, Saka? He yeah. went for a period. I, where I don't understand. Fans were kind of criticizing. I don't understand. Him. I feel like that world class debate started to like yeah, creep into exactly. Saka. Like, I don't understand because obviously there's like. The Vinicius kind of wingers, they're gonna, like, they look a bit more flashy, but Saka is mm. a super, super, um, like, functional winger where he's getting double marked every single game. Mm. He's still like producing the the goals and it's assists. Almost and a little bit like lot of assists debate, as well. Yeah, of say, yeah. Not as easy in the eye, but you can't argue with his numbers. Like they're just. What have you got, Miss Spence? Want tricks and skills. There's no wrong right. answers. No, yeah. no. This tough. is the right this one. This is though. so so tough. <laughs> <laughs> but this is the right. No, so you um, want Vinicius over? So we, but we, but you all agree, Mbappe. Clearly so, but really you've got Vinicius over Saka. Obviously, those goal involvements, you know, a lot of them are coming in that league, which yeah, is yeah. not comparative yeah, okay, to these fair, leagues. Fair. But he's in Mbappe. I expect him to do something special in the second leg mm. and potentially yeah. get PSG through against Barca. Um, yeah, I mean, listen, I don't disagree with that either. Um, I just think, and I'm probably being led a little bit by historical, like what have they won in their career and all these yeah. things, which I think is what Saka needs to do to now get to that next level, win the Prem, whatever it is. I mean, the Champions League of Arsenal would be incredible. Um, but... This man is, is special talent. And I was just thinking, someone said to me, you could swap for England in the Euros, make Vinicius English, would you do it and swap Saka? And I actually don't know. If I take, like, if I take <laughs> like, 
you know, the fact that he's our guy and we have that yeah. link with Saka and just for purely off football, I think I might take the deal. Okay. And that's why I put him there. OK. Um, Good debate, that one. Let's bring us on to our next debate. We're talking strikers. So I'll let you deanimate the magnets. And we're talking about Haaland. Interesting comments we've seen about Haaland. Yeah, yeah. Like what he Haaland's does. taking a batter in that. Yeah. Yeah. Like talking about what he does off the ball and on the ball. But obviously, stats-wise, he's been great. Kane, masterclass against Arsenal in that performance. And, of course, Lewandowski, who's been doing it for many years. Three top players. You've both done this very quickly, I will say. Yeah. Let's reveal to the camera. Good man. Yeah. Good man. Yeah. That's, so Harry Kane for you is best striker in the world. What is he in terms of best players in the world right now, Harry Kane? He's right up there. I think he's an unbelievable footballer. Um, of course, he's having a, obviously, unfortunate for him, Bayern Munich aren't yeah. going to win the league in his first season. It's like he can't catch a break, the guy. But first time in a decade. It's, 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 it's Spurs, won anything either. Yeah, oh, but it's like it's like super unlucky. But if you look at his individual season, if you look yeah. at his like, thirty-nine goals in thirty-seven starts. That is a, that, that's that's not right. Yeah. Like that is at this point, that's unfair. <laughs> like he should get. A, it's like I said, Mbappe should have got a World Cup winners medal. That just went. <laughs> scored a hat trick in the final. Yeah. Sometimes you should. He needs to get a Bundesliga winners medal, even if, like just with the Leverkusen team, just join them for that one day. <laughs> Because to have 39 goals in 37 yeah. games is unbelievable. And on top of that, he's a wonderful footballer. I feel bad for Haller right now. He's getting a lot of stick. Yeah. yeah. The whole football player debate and everything. Roy Keane saying that he's got the you know, non goal scoring ability of a League Two player. Yeah. Mm, yeah, that's interesting because, you know, if you compare them as footballers, again, technically, you know, this, this guy is massively superior to Erling Haaland, no doubt about it, in terms of what they can do with the, with the ball in, in the whole of the pitch. But it doesn't matter. The striker's job is not to, you know, play nice passes, ultimately mm -hmm. it's to score goals. And this guy's as good as anyone in the world at it. But this season, we know, and, and last season as well, the City can, can operate just fine without Haaland. Mm -hmm. I'm not saying they're better or worse with him, but they can. Take him out of any team he's ever been in, oh, and it's yeah. a problem. Right. Yeah, you know? Right. Lewandowski's... What's interesting about these three is, for me, in the Ronaldo-Messi era, we had ridiculous stats coming out of those yeah. two, and we didn't really have any strikers catching up with them. This guy was the closest, right? And now, in the new era, we have got... You, you basically have to do a goal a game to be in the conversation yeah. now, yeah. and these guys are all doing it, more or less, like, certainly, currently, these two. So, this guy's more important to his team than ha Haaland is for me. I think if Haaland went to Real Madrid in the summer or whenever, City just deal with it. To be honest, I think they yeah. find someone else. Okay. Harry Kane is Harry Kane. Yeah, I think we'll all point. agree. Great point. So, Harry Kane takes it. Good debate that start. So, a lot of agreement, actually. Mm. A couple of tough categories, but let us know what you think of them at home.